Oliver Heaviside was born on May 18, 1850 in Camden Town, London. As a child, he suffered from scarlet fever, which left him with a hearing impairment. After age 16, his parents could no longer send Oliver to school, causing him to study by himself. This was his last formal education. He later became an electrician at the Danish Great Northern Telegraph Company. He learned Morse code and studied electricity and languages, and was appointed chief telegraph operator in 1870. In 1872, his first paper, Comparing of Electromotive Forces, was published, which was attracted the attention of Maxwell, his biggest inspiration. In 1874, he established the ordinary symbolic method of analyzing alternating current circuits. Between 1880 and 1887, he developed his operational form of calculus. In 1981, he was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society, FRS, due to his extensive research on electromagnetic waves. His, the first volume of his work, Electromagnetic Theory, was published in 1893. Heaviside died on February 3, 1925, after falling off a ladder. Okay, so the theorem that we're proving is the uniqueness of limits. So um, we show that a function cannot have two different limits at the same point, that is, if limit as x approaches x sub 0 of f of x equals L1, and limit as x approaches x sub 0 of f of x equals L2, then L1 equals L2. First, we let f as a approaches all reals be a function. And let x sub 0 be a cluster point of A. We also let limit <laughs> as x approaches x sub 0 f of x equal L1 and limit as x approaches x sub 0 f of x equal L2 and we suppose that L1 does not equal L2. We are proving this by contradiction. So given that epsilon is greater than zero, and um, since the limit as x approaches x sub zero of f of x equals L1, then for epsilon one equals epsilon over two, there exists a delta um, greater than zero. Oh, this is so um, much better than one. Uh -huh. If x is an element of A and zero is less than x minus x sub zero, the absolute value of x minus x sub zero um, is less than delta then f of x minus l the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon 1 equal to epsilon over 2. Uh, similarly,
since uh, limit as x approaches x sub 0 of f of x equals L2, then epsilon 2 equals epsilon over 2. Um, there exists uh, a delta 2 which is greater than 0 such that if x um, is an element of A and 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus x sub 0 which is less than delta delta 2 Oh my god, this is so crooked. Then, <laughs> then um, absolute value of f of x minus L2 is less than epsilon 2, which equals epsilon over 2. Now, let delta equals min delta 1, delta 2, we have absolute value of L1 minus L2 equals absolute value L1 minus f of x plus f of x minus L2 is, uh, sorry, less than or equal to L minus L1 minus f of x plus absolute value f of x minus L2, um, which is less than epsilon 1. Can you see it? Yeah, it show? I'm doing it. Sorry. Epsilon 1, epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2, which equals epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 and equals epsilon but this is 7 minutes long but epsilon is greater than 0 is arbitrary so this implies that the absolute value of L1 minus L2 equals 0. That is L1 equals L2, which is a contradiction Um, of our assumption that L1 did not equal L2, um, which means that the limit as x approaches x sub 0 of f of x equals L1, then L1 is unique box and done. Okay, so for my review question, I have chapter 1, section 1.5, number 7. For the function g whose graph is given, state the value of each quantity if it exists. If it does not exist, explain why.